Hello, thank you for joining with me. We're in A Course in Miracles. This is Chapter 6, The Lessons of Love. This is Section 5, I believe. Yes, The Lessons of the Holy Spirit. And this is Part B of Section 5. To have peace, teach peace to learn it. If you'd like to close your eyes and join me in prayer. Dear Father, please allow me to set aside everything I think I know about today's reading, about you, about this world, my brothers, myself, forgiveness, any principles I hold on to any thoughts that I cling to. Please enable me to set aside everything that I think I know about all of these things. And so it is. Thank you, God. Okay. To have peace, and this flash is not on, so I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll be right back. You won't even know I'm gone. Yay, here we are. To have peace, teach peace to learn it. All who believe in separation have a basic fear of retaliation and abandonment. They believe in attack and rejection, so that is what they perceive and teach and learn. These insane ideas are clearly the result of dissociation and projection. What you teach, you are, but it is quite apparent that you can teach wrongly and can therefore teach yourself wrong. Many thought I was attacking them even though it was apparent I was not. An insane learner learns strange lessons. What you must recognize is that when you do not share a thought system, you are weakening it. Those who believe in it, therefore, perceive this as an attack on them. This is because everyone identifies himself with his thought system, and every thought system centers on what you believe you are. If the center of the thought system is true, only truth extends from it. But if a lie is at its center, only deception proceeds from it. All good teachers realize that only fundamental change will last, but they do not begin at that level. Strengthening motivation for change is their first and foremost goal. It is also their last and final one. Increasing motivation for change in the learner is all that a teacher need do to guarantee change. Change in motivation is a change of mind, and this will inevitably produce fundamental change because the mind is fundamental. The first step in the reversal or undoing process is the undoing of the getting concept. Accordingly, the Holy Spirit's first, what, first lesson was to have give all to all. I said that this is apt to increase conflict temporarily, and we can clarify this still further now. At this point, the equality of having and being is not yet perceived. Until it is, having appears to be the opposite of giving. Therefore, the first lesson seems to contain a contradiction since it is being learned by a conflicted mind. This means conflicting motivation and so the lesson cannot be learned consistently as yet. Further, the mind of the learner projects its own conflict and thus does not perceive consistency 
in the minds of others, making him suspicious of their motivation. This is the real reason why, in many respects, the first lesson is the hardest to learn. Still strongly aware of the ego in yourself and responding primarily to the ego in others, you are being taught to react to both as if what you do believe is not true. Upside down as always, the ego perceives the first lesson as insane. In fact, this is its only alternative since the other possibilities, which would be much less, much less acceptable to it, would obviously be that it is insane. The ego's judgment here, as always, is predetermined by what it is. The fundamental change will still occur with the change of mind in the thinker. Meanwhile, the increasing clarity of the Holy Spirit's voice makes it impossible for the learner not to listen. For a time, then, he is receiving conflicting messages and accepting both. The way out of conflict between two opposing thought systems is clearly to choose one and relinquish the other. If you identify with your thought system and you cannot escape this, and if you accept two thought systems which are in complete disagreement, peace of mind is impossible. If you teach both, which you will surely do as long as you accept both, you are teaching conflict and learning it. Yet you do want peace, or you would not have called upon the voice for peace to help you. Its lesson is not insane. The conflict is. There can be no conflict between sanity and insanity. Only one is true and therefore only one is real. The ego tries to persuade you that it is up to you to decide which voice is true. I'm just going to pause there as I turn the page. But the Holy Spirit teaches you that truth was created by God and your decision cannot change. As you begin to realize the quiet power of the Holy Spirit's voice and its perfect, con perfect consistency, it must dawn on your mind that you are trying to undo a decision that was irrevocably made for you. That is why I suggested before that you remind yourself to allow the Holy Spirit to decide for God for you. You are not asked to make insane decisions, although you can think you are. It must, however, be insane to believe that it is up to you to decide what God's creations are. The Holy Spirit perceives the conflict exactly as it is. Therefore, his second lesson is to have peace, teach peace, to learn it. This is still a preliminary step since having and being are still not equated. It is, however, more advanced than the first step, which is really only the beginning of the thought reversal. The second step is a positive affirmation of what you want. This, then, is a step in the direction out of conflict, since it means that alternatives have been considered and one has been chosen as more desirable. Nevertheless, the term more desirable still implies that the desirable has degrees. Therefore, although this step is essential for the ultimate decision, it is clearly not the final one. Lack of order of difficulty in miracles has not yet been accepted because nothing is difficult that is wholly desired. 
To desire wholly is to create, and creating cannot be difficult if God himself created you as a creator. The second step then is still perceptual, although it is a giant step toward the unified perception that reflects God's knowledge. I'm sorry, God's knowing. As you take this step and hold this direction, you will be pushing toward the center of your thought system where the fundamental change will occur. At the second step, progress is intermittent, but the second step is easier than the first because it follows. Realizing that it must follow is a demonstration of a growing awareness that the Holy Spirit will lead you on. We're going to stop there and pick up part C tomorrow of section five, the lessons of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask that you go ahead, sit with your back supported and head and neck free, and we will move into a meditation. Back supported, head and neck free, focus on your breathing. Go ahead and breathe for a count of two through your nose and four out of your mouth if you're able to. Then move to 3x and 4x breath while I read lesson 59. God goes with me wherever I go. God is my strength. Vision is his gift. God is my source. I cannot see apart from him. God is the light in which I see. God is the mind with which I think. God goes with me wherever I go. God is my strength. Vision is his gift. God is my source. I cannot see apart from him. God is the light in which I see. God is the mind with which I think. That's lesson 59, lessons 41 through 45. Now let's go ahead and come to your senses. Feel what you feel in your body, any aches, pains, itches, tickles. Just feel what you feel in your body. Taste what you taste. Anything sweet or bitter? Is your mouth dry? Now let's go ahead and hear what we hear. hear what do you hear closest to you and what do you hear furthest away? And with your eyes closed, see what you see, any lights or patterns. Now let's go ahead and take a big 4x breath through your nose and out your mouth for a count of eight. And let's smell what you smell. You may use the lesson for a mantra or a mantra of your choice. God goes with me wherever I go. God is my strength, 
vision is his gift. God is my source. I cannot see apart from him. God is the light in which I see. God is the mind with which I think.
Now let's go ahead and think of three things that you're grateful for. I will repeat the lesson as you focus on your gratitude. God goes with me wherever I go. God is my strength. Vision is his gift. God is my source. I cannot see apart from him. God is the light in which I see. God is the mind with which I think. Now go ahead and feel that gratitude. Let it encircle and encapsulate your entire body. Feel the vibration of love and joy. And let us carry this out into our day today. I love you. Thank you so much for joining with me. We will pick up chapter 6, section 5 tomorrow. Have a beautiful day.